Hi, everyone. This is Dave Smith from No Kill Colorado. I am here with Aubrey Cavanaugh on No Kill Huntsville and Alan Rosenberg from the New Jersey Animal Observer. Um, we're talking about reading today. Um, what's in our No Kill library? There is a lot of there's a lot of great stuff out there that uh, I think we all read. Um, there's some kind of standards that I think we've all read, but hopefully we'll get a, a little variation here. Um, I'm going to mention something first, which is what I use to get somebody excited about No Kill. I never point them to a book because I never know if they're a reader. Um, I know the three of us are readers. I point them to the No Kill Advocacy Center for the publications there because they're short and they're usually very clear. So I pick one, depending on the subject we're talking about, if we were talking about the cost of saving lives, I point them to dollars and cents, a publication of the Nuclear Advocacy Center. If we were talking about, you know, um, how uh, uh, behavior animals, uh, you know, you know, what are you gonna do about behavior animals? There's no dog left behind. Another great um, piece, or if it's about medical, uh, it's not quite very exciting, but it's definitive. It's the matrix um, on, on the No Kill Advocacy Center, which says this: is, these are the treatable types of things that animals come in with. So I use that as one of my bases, but then I do go to books. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to let you guys go first. So Aubrey, why don't you tell us some of the books and just, and it doesn't have to just be books, but what, what's in your No Kill Library? Well, first of all, I would I would agree with you. When I'm first bringing someone to the subject, whether it's an elected official or someone who has no idea what the no-kill movement is about, I use those same booklets available on the No-Kill Advocacy Center website because they're short, they're easy to understand, there's some overlap. Um, and that way it brings people in without saying, oh uh, yeah, read, read this 250 page book and then we'll talk about it when you get done. It's a little bit too much like assigning homework, right? Having said that though, I do have a library and I, I didn't bring my whole library with, with me, but I mean, these, these are my top, what is it, top 10, okay. Um, Redemption, The Myth of Pet Overpopulation in the No-Kill Re Revolution in America by Nathan Winograd, published in 2007. Reading this book quite literally changed my life. I mean, I thought I was animal aware um, before I started reading this book and, and just what was in this book, it really put me down a different life path. So that's one. Um, the a companion book to that, Irreconcilable Differences, also by Nathan Winograd. Um, it's got a series of, of short chapters that are on specific subjects that just kind of, it, it's, it's one step beyond redemption. So that's the next one. Um, I, had a, I had occasion years ago, the shelter director asked me to write a research paper. She called it a white paper, but a research paper to help her adopt pit bull type dogs. So I had to start doing a lot of research. And at the time, um, the book I went with was The Pit Bull Placebo by Karen DeLise. She is the head researcher at the National Canine Research Council who deals with uh, research regarding dog bite fatalities. She's like the woman in the country. Um, and my Delise next one, this is Pitbull, Battle Over an American Icon by Bronwyn Dickey. And she talks about Karen Delise. So this one back in the day was what was available. But when Bronwyn came out with this book, this is what we call in the legal field, it's a treatise. It is like the book. If you wanna learn about issues related to, not only to Pitbull type dogs, but related to how we view dogs in our society based on who owns them, um, it's a wonderful history book. Um, on my Pitbull theme, we have Galunker by Douglas Anthony Cooper, which is a wonderful children's book that has to do not only with Pitbull type dogs, but about um, perceptions, about shelters, how they're run. Um, next up, and I haven't read this one yet, but I wanted to say something about it. It's a new book by, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it's right, Katja Gunter, The Lives and Deaths of Shelter Animals. Um, this came up recently in a conversation on a Facebook group. And I think much like Bronwyn's book, it does also talk about how we view animals based on how we view each other and where those animals come from and who ordinarily owns those animals. Next up, David, you recommended this one to me, No Better Friend. Um, it's a story of a dog that um, was um, befriended by some people in a POW camp during World War II. And these, these people went through terrible, terrible oil ordeals to try to stay alive. And so did the dog. And it... I, I believe that you wrote a blog about it. Um, and it just is a, it's a testament to the will to live. And because people and dogs have such a strong will to live as no-kill advocates, we need to do everything we can to help them stay alive. And of course, just because I have one sitting around, 
is my book, Not Rocket Science, a story of no-kill shelter animal advocacy in Huntsville, Alabama. And I call it a story instead of the story because I know that there are different views on what happened in Huntsville, Alabama. I'd like to think that with my book, what I tried to do was uh, relate it back to redemption and the no-kill equation, which we all promote, um, and show how we in Huntsville use that no-kill equation to try to change the culture at our local tax-funded animal shelter. That's great. That's a, that's a great collection. And I don't think you had to bring in rocket science because it was going to be brought up by two other people on this panel today. <laughs> also, um, the No Better Friend one, I'm really glad you brought that one up. Um, just because, and I did write a blog, it's on the No Kill Movement, maybe we can add that when we post this video. The, 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 the whole point of that book in the end for me was, it's a great World War II book. It's a great dog book. It, it, they, they, there's so many good things about it, um, about a, a horrible situation. But the, the fact is, is when we say, you know, oh, well, this animal is suffering. So that, you know, when, when aggressive shelters say, oh, you know, we killed him because, you know, this, this animal is suffering. You look at what this animal and these people went through and they did not want to die. They wanted to keep going. They, there is, they, that was, that was the power of that book. I, I just adore that book. Um, and it's not about animal sheltering. That's kind of why I like it because it came in. It was that the person writing it had no idea what the no kill movement was or what we talk about in sheltering and it fit perfectly. I just love it. Alan, what's in your library? Well, um, I'm certainly not as voracious as a reader as Aubrey, but um, I do. Uh, I did. I do have on my list many of the same books she has. So, um, I reckon um, Redemption is the Bible for No Kill, in my opinion, changed my life, transformed me from a volunteer to a regressive shelter, and ultimately into a No Kill advocate. Um, his follow-up books, Irreconcilable Differences and Friendly Fire, um, build upon that, which I'd recommend. Um, he also has a book called Welcome Home. If you're more interested in more broad animal rights, it's a really interest book, interesting book. It's somewhat theoretical, but really kind of answers a lot of questions I've wondered about from a philosophical point of view. Of course, Aubrey's book, if you want to do no pill advocacy. Um, I would also say that uh, more broadly, these days I'm not reading as much because there's so much information out there. Um, in terms of webinars, uh, Zoom calls, um, and studies. Um, I read a lot of studies, actually. Um, Nathan Winograd often points me to the really good ones, and I'd, I'd, I'd recommend you following his page. You know, He's had some really interesting ones, for example, about cats coming into shelters that are deemed feral, and then when they socialize them, guess what? Most of them aren't feral. Um, but more broadly than that, um, other things that I've read that I, I'd recommend people is to read some blogs, No Kill Advocacy blogs. Um, of course, Aubrey's blog, blog Pause for Change, is very influential on me. Uh, very good about explaining the principles of No Kill and why shelters are killing. Very, very great blog. Um, other blogs are, most of them which are no longer um, active, but still have good information out there. Uh, a blog called Yes Biscuit, which is a really sarcastic, but to the point, uh, no kill blog that was that was written uh, for several years. Um, Brent Tolner's old blog, no kill. Uh, sorry, Casey Dog blog uh, was really good in terms of uh, talking about things like link to stay, which was really influential on me on helping me get under on, on thinking about how shelters should operate. Um, Wisconsin Watchdog with our friend Kathy Pawlowski was a really uh, interesting blog. Uh, no longer active, but really to the point in terms of no-kill issues, very well written. So I think um, those are the things I more broadly read, but in terms of books, definitely the Nathan Winograd books. If you're going to read one, Redemption, because that's really the Bible of no-kill. Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with that. I, I think we all, all three of us, Redemption was our kind of entry into at least what we're doing today. For me, it was a decade ago. That is um, the book, when I do recommend that to people, we have changed. We, there's been a wild success in ten, uh, the 10 years since that book has been written. So um, I always let them know that. I'm like, you're going to see that, but you, you, but you, you know, you're also going to say like, well, wait a minute, it's, it's not that bad. I'm like, well, it is pretty bad. But the fact is that book changed what's going on. These conversations that we're having right now were not happening. 10 years ago. Um, in addition to that, um, Alan didn't mention himself, 
the New Jersey Animal Observer um, is a great um, Facebook, uh, uh, was a, a timeline uh, to follow. Uh, I mean, I read obviously, and that, that is Alan. He writes all those. It is great when you, it, it's really localized, but it's great to understand the things that you come up with to actually show how you look at shelters, how you look at data, and how that helps you understand what's going on there. Um, and Aubrey, obviously your blog, I read all the time, go to Pores for Change, read way back. Because what, what I like about yours, Aubrey, is I started reading it a longer ago, and I remember things when I'm talking to someone, I'm like, wait a minute, Aubrey wrote about that. I don't even have to write about that. I just get to say, read this. <laughs> so yeah, look at Pause for Change and look in the history. There's some beautiful things out there. Um, there's another book I'm gonna mention, um, but I always mention it with a cautionary tale. I do not agree with the conclusion of this book, but I do like the research and I have a much different conclusion than the author. And it's Dog Merchants, mm -hmm. which, I think it's a really good book, three quarters of the way, maybe 80% of the way there. And then the, the ending, I, we come to completely different conclusions. I absolutely disagree with where she went, but her research is excellent. I don't even remember the author. Um, but uh, Dog Merchants is really is a good book to understand the sales industry of pets. Um, uh, the research is fantastic. Um, I think that's everything we have. This was a great session, actually. I love all the things we talked about. Did anyone forget something once we started talking? Um, came... Dog Merchants is by Kim Cavan, and I, I, I agree with you, David. I uh, And, you know, Kim and I are in fairly regular contact. Um, I have a lot of respect for the research that she did for that book. When she got toward the end, um, she kind of lost me a little bit, but you know what? We don't have to agree, agree on everything. And it, it is a very good look into the mon monetary aspects um, and I know that you mentioned Alan's Facebook page, but his blog is the New Jersey Animal Observer. He's got some great stuff on there. And I'm just going to say, Alan's our numbers guy. I mean, I don't know anybody who's better with numbers in my in my life, whether it has to do with work, advocacy, or whatever, that's a better numbers guy than Alan. And, and he does relate what's happening in other parts of the country. Like he recently did some blogs related to Lake County, Florida, and right. how they used the no-kill equation to completely change how the shelter operated overnight. So He's got a he's got a, um, a, a more wide coverage than just New Jersey. And I had forgotten before you showed it, Alan, um, Nathan's book called Welcome Home. Um, I actually did a blog on that one, too, because it's a really good look into what Peter really wants. Um, and it's really kind of scary. Um, so um, on Pause for Change, you can look for my blog on Welcome Home. Um, there's just so much stuff out there that, it, Alan, I agree with you. Sometimes it's like drinking from a fire hose, even for those of us that have been doing this for 15 years, because there's just so much out there and it's coming at you so fast, not just in terms of books, but you know, blogs, websites, webinars, um, Zoom chats. It's just a lot of stuff. But um, starting with those No-Kill Advocacy Center booklets, David, and then going to we all agree that redemption is the book that got us on a certain path. So I, I do always recommend that. Maybe a little bit like doing homework, but you know what? I think I think reading it has changed the lives of many people. And for that, I genuinely thank Nathan Winograd. Uh, David, I think you're on mute. Yeah, we lost you for sorry, a bit. I had, but... dogs, I had dogs barking in the back, <laughs> background, so. So um, I, I really uh, miss, uh, I mean, I agree with everything about, I think the three of us both have given Nathan a lot of credit for where we are today and what, what started us out. Um, but uh, you mentioned Yes Biscuit, who I absolutely adored. She went in a different direction a couple of years ago and doesn't really do, but she um, really wrote in a way about things that were really important and sometimes horrifying and could still make me laugh because of her, the way she viewed things without being offensive. She wasn't making fun of the, she wasn't belittling the subject. She, her view was just so, I really that's, miss. That's I really Shirley Fiskel White. So short. Yeah. Yeah, so Shirley Fiskel White, and she I mean, has some great stuff on there. So yeah, agreed. I miss her writing. I really do miss mm -hmm. her writing, so. And, uh, and I think we, should, I think we forgot about Mike Fry. Um, certainly oh Mike, gosh. Uh, Mike's, uh, Contributions are, are broad, um, in particular, um, No Kill Learning. Fantastic information on that website. 
Um, and also, if you've ever had a chance to read some of his consulting reports uh, at Lane County, really good stuff, like spot on, stuff I have not seen written before by any other consultant. So um, if you can ever get your hands on some of uh, I've ne I've never read those. Like That's interesting. Really, I've never read. They're, they're, they're actually, I got one of them linked in my blog on uh, on Lake County, but I, I, I have all the reports. So uh, if anyone wants them, just email mjanimalobserver at gmail.com. I need to throw one more out there just yep. because you mentioned it. I got to give a shout out to Brent Tolner, who now is the National Programs Director for the Best Friends Animal Society. Brent wrote under a KC dog blog. He wrote a blog years ago about why it is that we should oppose mandatory spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. And even though that blog is years old, I, I, I must share it once a month because it really breaks down why it is that promoting high volume, low cost spay and neuter is great, but trying to make it mandatory is a terrible idea. So KC dog blog for sure. I, I, and I'm, I'm going to cut us off after this, but I have one more because I forgot about it. It's the one that I share over and over again is Douglas Anthony Cooper from the Huff Post, where he actually took on all the, all the, uh, the sh frankly, the charlatans about pit bull uh, myths and statistics. And I absolutely love that article. I wish I remember the name of it right now. It's called uh, the, I think it's called something like the Charlotte and behind the pit bull myth, something like that. Anyway, Douglas Anthony Cooper, that one uh, article from Huffington Post, you can look it up that way. And uh, I, I, I post that probably once a month for the last five years. Um, anyway, we have to go way over time. This wound up being a much longer conversation than I expected. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm David Smith with No Kill Colorado here with Alan Rosenberg from the New Jersey Animal Observer, Aubrey Kavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. This is No Kill Emotion. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.